Mm-hmm. One, two, mic check. One, two, one, two. What it do? What it Welcome do? Welcome back to Hot Seat with Icy Jones, man, on Room Service Radio. You know we live from 12 to 2 every Thursday and Friday, and today is that good Friday. I just had YM the Don, that's Young Miller, you feel me, in the building. And right now, right now, I got Veronica Cooper. <laughs> Proof. Hey, what'd you say? Truth. You ain't never told <laughs> a lie about the I'm matches. I'm going to burn it down in the new weather. Truth. It, <laughs> yeah. What's happening with you, baby girl? What's up? What's up? What's up? Man, I'm excited to have you on the show. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just really elated right now because I've been following you for a long time. Um, it's been some years, I think. When was that video? What, what year was that? It was like five years ago. I feel like Six it was years longer. ago, actually. Yeah, it was longer. I'm like 21. Yep, like 2014, 2015. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it was my very, very first music video. Wow. And you never released it? Or you did? I did. You did. I just wasn't in yep. it. I just wasn't in it. Yeah, that whole scene <laughs> that like everybody had came out for, since we didn't actually get to film it, like... <clears throat> It didn't happen. It's all so, good. Like, but we you, had to make something happen. Change the whole storyline. Right? You got to keep going. You feel me? But right. that was like my introduction to you. That's when I got to meet you. Um, and the very first time I got to support you. Um, and I, I thank you because you got your Bug God situations coffee mug, didn't you? I did. I yes. did. Yes. Yes. I guess, I guess used in this household. Yes. So, all right. Let's take it back. Where are you originally from? Born and raised. I'm from Vegas. Yes. Born, semi-raised. Okay. And then where were you raised? Du- um, duality. Jesus. I lived everywhere. Like, I was in Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, Rhode Island, Florida, okay. you know, Vegas. Okay. Is that due to just moving or military? Yeah, or my what? mom was just one of those people. She, she Mom was an educator. So, like, okay. she'd wake up and be like, okay, this school needs us. Mm. And we just go to the new city like every year. Wow, that's dope. Did you did you enjoy that, or were you like? Did it take you a minute to capture what's going on? You know, um, actually, I enjoyed it, but yeah. it has messed me up as an adult because all I want to do is keep moving. Like I'd be like, I don't know where I want to go. Okay, okay. Because I mean, you know, you got the one side where it's like, Mom, I can't keep my friends, right? And then you got the <laughs> next side. Where it's like, baby girl, we on an adventure, so this is what we do. And it's like, okay, mom. Like, one of those, you know what I mean? I don't so, know, I value the adventure more because my mom is awesome. So dude. I actually, I think, I don't know, I feel like it helped me because now I have friends everywhere. Yes. And I can go anywhere and I can always find my way around. So yes. I guess it's nice. Perfect, perfect. And mom at one point was momager? Yes, she was. She still be doing her damn thing. Okay, shout out to moms, man. <laughs> um, I met her as well, you know what I mean, um, during that time. So when did music become your career? Um, it officially became my career. Ooh, what year was that? What year did I move to L.A.? 2018? 2018? 2018. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a little earlier than that. I think I'm trying like, to think. I'm not thinking so too. Actually, I think I moved in 2017. Yeah, I think I it was 17. About it. I think it was 17. Yeah, I think it was the end of 2017. Because uh, yeah, yeah. Because once um once my album came out, I ended up moving to LA a couple months later. So yeah, that was in 2017. I remember, and I tell you this all the time, that you showed the world or whoever your followers were. That in your TuneCore account, it was over $58,000 made from, like, oh three God. singles. Yes, three. The first three to ever drop. Like, right. I'm life. like, you can take that and you can retire yourself from working a normal job if you just live correctly and now invest some of that money into your lifestyle, the roof over your head, and into your career. And you can continue to live that way once you accumulate $58,000. Yeah, it's possible. So, well, why was that important at that time? 
at that time, honestly, let me honest with you, I didn't even know I wanted to do music. So when all that happened, it was kind of just like a more of a shock of anything. It was like this was supposed to be a hobby, something to do for fun. It wasn't until those moments happened at the end of 2017 that my whole entire life really truly changed. And I was like, oh, we're we're really doing this. Like we we about to go all in. So I guess at that time it really I needed to know that I was capable of doing those things in order for me to move forward. Well, that's true, but why was it important for you to show us this? Because in Vegas, like, our scene is, like, I don't know what the scene is now, I'm going to be honest with you, but at the time, it was like, everybody was kind of like, oh, no one supports, no one does this, oh, I can't be successful from from Vegas, and I was just like, that's really not true, like, here's evidence of a fact that we really can do this, living and being from our city, like, you don't have to be from Chicago or New York to, in order to have a backing. Like yes. our city actually is there. Like I also showed the analytics. Yes. Yes, you did. And I directly inboxed you and was like, how in the hell did you make this happen? Right. Mm-hmm. And I learned a lot of game from you just that through that DM and I lost my page. Like it got hacked. So I don't have oh. the actual messages anymore, but I retained that information. Okay. V. And one of the things I'm gonna give a few keys. One of the things was, you literally talked to your uh, Facebook friends. You went from A to Z and had a conversation with each one of them and asked them to support. And you said you would start out with just a normal conversation. Hey, how did you follow me? Like, I haven't, I don't know how you follow me or I haven't talked to you in some time. What's good? And start conversation. You would have boxes, messenger boxes open like 10 at a time. And you'd be talking to 10 different people. And then finally you would end with, well, would you mind supporting and downloading my single? Right? Yeah. Am I lying? That's true. Proof. (laughs) This is all hard work. Right? And some people just don't have that, you know, like, do I really got it? Yes, you have to engage now in this day and age. You do, unless you go viral. (laughs) Right. And then you got, we all, like, make it to, like, four to 5,000 friends, and that's the cap out, right? Unless you got the like page going up, right? Mm -hmm. You were going on that friends page, the ones that are your friends. And you were tapping in with each one of them, right? Who did somebody give you that game, or how did you, what, what happened? Trial and error. Okay. Just trying something new. That's it. And it worked. That's it. And it worked. And it worked out. Um, it's crazy because it was only three singles that did that. Three singles. Is that three singles at a dollar twenty nine and ninety nine cent, or it was all over the place? I time? believe they were all ninety nine cent. <sighs> That's crazy, and only three of them. It wasn't even the album. Three of them. My first three. What was the name? That was of those? before. That was before the mixtape even officially dropped. Facts. What was the name of those three songs? Um, it were. Oh my god! Someone once told me. Yep. I remember um, that. Oh my god! It is so old. Yes. <laughs> yes. Someone once told me for sure. Uh, bad news, I believe. Mm-hmm. And. Darn, you I gotta remember don't know your. You gotta was. remember your first three, girl. Them, <laughs> them took you through the roof. That, that you got my attention. I think it was better roses. I think it was better roses. I don't have a music video to it, so yeah, I think it was better roses. Okay, and you had a TuneCore account. Mm-hmm. Did somebody tell you to go to TuneCore, or was it trial and error as well, or what happened? Trial and error. Okay, so and they were like one of the biggest ones at the time when it comes to distribution. Mm-hmm. Uh, channel yeah at that time I, I don't think any of the newer ones were out but i definitely like did a lot of research before of, like officially saying okay i'm gonna go with TuneCore on this particular project right like instead of cd baby you know what i mean mm-hmm. TuneCore, right so boom then i don't know if you told me this but i found out that you're able to go to facebook and type in the search button my friends who live in put a city and they'll all I don't think they can still do it. I think they took it away. Is it still available to do that? I think it's still available to do that. I oh, tried. Okay. It. Yes. And now you know where to go tour. Now you know where your people are. And you can DM yep. them. And you can send them a flyer and ask them to do certain things. Right? Your supporters. Yep. Yep. It's crazy. So mom's an educator. How did mm-hmm. she end up being momager? Um... <laughs> I think it was because she realized I was taking on way too many like jobs and I needed help. Mm. Um, a lot of people uh, probably don't remember that when I first really started doing music, I was in a girl group. Mm-hmm. So like, she was kind of like working like with all three of us in the girl group. Before, okay. You know. 
Uh, I think I do remember you in the girl group. Who was in the girl group? I remember that. Who was that? <laughs> the girl group was Estem, Seriously Mumbling, and it was my best friends, uh, Judy B and Donna. Judy B. And AKA Black Donna. <laughs> yes. And you guys disbanded? Was it everything good or what when y'all disbanded? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess um, not everybody wanted to do music for a living. So it was kind of more like I. I ain't even gonna lie. I was like, I kind of forced everybody to join the group. Okay. <laughs> I was like, all my friends, we're not doing nothing. All y'all rap or sing or act. Let's come together and do something. So we're just not sitting in the house all day. And that's kind of really how the group really started. Yeah. And then studio sessions. So who are some of your favorite engineers when it comes to Vegas? Uh, obviously, Cody got beats for sure. Cody. Where'd you get your beats from? You get them from Cody? <laughs> I did my my whole entire Sugar and Spice album was actually produced by him. Um, mm. I love Cody. That is definitely like my Timberland to my Missy. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. What's the song you got with Taz Gotti? Uh, Taz Gotti, uh, same page. Wow, Taz Gotti. Yes. I ain't heard from him in a minute. But yes. Yeah, we did a song called Same Page. I think it was a couple years ago. Yeah, it was like a love song. Yes. He's still out here grinding. Shout out Taz Gotti. Yeah, so, I saw he's doing a little bit of comedy too. So I thought that was pretty dope. Hmm. So now you've been traveling though. You got up out of Vegas. Got about. Okay. Um, Atlanta is where you're at now? I'm currently in Atlanta, yep. Okay. So I gotta take it back to a time when the world stopped because Veronica Cooper and Train Scholar said they were dating. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay i tried to sip my tea and mind my business but <laughs> it was hard because like that just we didn't it was caught off guard like what them two like what like i haven't even seen them on the same stage let alone in a studio <laughs> like when did this come about so what was that about in that time? And it was like 2020, like last year or something. Like, talk to me about it. <laughs> so actually, fun story. People, I guess people just don't know. Actually, when I started doing music, I had been met Train. Mm -hmm. And we were already really close, like years, years ago. I've known Train um, since high school, but go ahead. talk to me. <laughs> yeah, we were cool years ago. Um, and then earlier this year, we were like, you know... What you up to? How you doing? And then things just led to other other. So And it was it was real for a moment. Yeah. See, we thought y'all was joking and y'all was like, why is everybody laughing? Oh, we know y'all we know y'all thought we were joking. And then it was just like, what do we do? And then we were like, we can't drop a song because they're gonna think that we're we're faking. Yeah. So <laughs> And you never did a song. Never dropped a song. And we never did a song. Wow. So how long did that last? Friends uh, dating. The beginning of this year that was it like six yeah. months or less yeah wow when the last time you had a boyfriend before that last time i had a boyfriend before that yeah uh a couple months before that <laughs> <laughs> listen man i just this is the one thing um as long as i've known you you've you've made like you know love music right um you're a rapper you got some some vocals on you you know but I've never really seen you promote a boyfriend, like ever. <laughs> right? It's not something yeah. you promoted. You know what I mean? Well, you know what's funny? Um, so I've been I basically have dated the same guy for a very long time on and off. And he does not do social media. Okay. So I really never post him because I don't have the ability to tag him. You don't have the ability to tag them, so you don't post them. Got it. All right. <laughs> he don't even like taking photos. Like, oh, nah, I barely get okay. photos with him, so. All right. Is it hard to maintain a relationship being a musician on your grind? And it's a career. This isn't a hobby. Um, You know what? I'm going to say yes and no. I'm going to mm. say no, because as long as you're dating someone who is supportive of you and understands, like, hey, you know, I'm in a male-dominated field. So, like, he has to take, you know, trust me that I'm really out here doing what I need to do to get these songs done, get albums done, do these features. Like, I need him to trust me, you know. Um, 
but at the same time, like I can definitely see like, you know, issues again, such as, you know, other boyfriends, you know, that mm-hmm. really probably are fake relationships here and there. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's 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 hit it's hit or miss. I don't know. It's hit or miss. I just see certain people like they'll have their relations but it's not a relationship or it won't last because their music is first. Is music first for you? Cause it's your career. My music is first. I will always put music before anything and anyone. Yeah. Um, and that makes it hard, right? To maintain it. It does. It can be. Yeah. Um, now moving forward, you take this very seriously. I just seen you at the revolt, uh, conference yep. with DJ Kelly J. Yep. Well, actually, no, no, no. Uh, I was with DJ Kelly J at the Core Coalition. Um, yes, Core DJs. Core. Core DJs. Yeah. Okay. But so that was the same weekend. Yeah, it was. The, that was the, the fall. That was the weekend, and then the next weekend, I was at Revolt. Okay. Was this in both of these in Atlanta? No, the Core DJ Retreat was in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now and the Revolt was in Atlanta. How do you keep up with these things? Because this is not the first time you've been at an actual conference. You go to the BMI one too, don't you? Um, actually, I have not been to that one. Oh, you haven't? Mm-hmm. But this isn't the first time you've been to a conference? No, it's not the first. What does it take to keep up with these conferences and to go and to spend money and to, you know, and is it worth it for the knowledge you attain? Um, It really depends on what your reasoning behind is going. So, for me, networking is really important. So if I acknowledge that there's someone in a certain field that I really want to talk to, but I have a hard time directly getting in contact with them, mm. that's when these meetings and these summits and these conferences start coming in handy because it gives me an opportunity to try and meet them one-on-one. Yeah. Um, just just at the Revolt Summit, it was worth going because I'm actually currently looking for a new team. Like I'm looking for, you know, um, new management looking for new artists to work with, new producers. I'm also looking for PR. So there were people who are in the industry who I knew were going to be there, and I actually got the chance to meet all of them and get their numbers directly. Yes. So now I can just, like, get to work instead of me sitting on the computer like, oh, how do I get a hold of this person, you know, getting frustrated. Yeah, and going through that red tape because everybody don't, they don't take unsolicited emails mm-hmm. nor phone calls. That's nice. Yeah, you know I mean? Um, now let's take it back to 2019 Rasby. Mm-hmm. how did that come about and how did that go and is it still a connection mm-hmm. three questions in one um, how did that come about how did that go <laughs> and is that still a connection <laughs> um how that came about uh jesus i hate giving people names uh some guy named ej i had actually met him when i was passing on my mixtape so when um when I hit the billboards, he kept saying, oh, I want you to meet Raz. I want you to meet Raz. I think he'll be a great benefit for you. He's trying to help a Vegas artist. And me, was I was like, sure, I guess. So I met him a couple of times. And after a couple of times, he was like, you know, I really want, you know, to bring you under my management team. I want to be your consultant. You know, EJ wants to, you know, kind of be your manager, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I was like, why not? People have knowledge I don't have, and I'm always open to it. So mm-hmm. We did like a little deal together and it was working out at first. And then a bunch of BS happened that I'm not even going to speak on, but I definitely didn't trust the situation. It somehow got me into ATL, didn't work out. Um, And so, no, it is not currently going on anymore. And thank God, actually. Ooh, can we remove that from the screen? What's happening here? Thank you. Okay. Not happening anymore. But you, you're an independent artist. What made you want to get signed or do a deal with, with. Hmm. I was never signed. No, 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 no. Okay. It was more, it was more consulting and management help. I was never signed. Like I, I have my own label and everything. Yes. What's it? What's the name of your label? It's purple bar productions. Purple bar. Mm -hmm. What that mean? You said what? What that mean? My mom, <laughs> my mom wants to live in the country and her favorite color is purple. So like purple and barn. So oh, purple, purple barn. barn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Dope. Now, 
That's what I'm saying. When you read the headlines, it just seems as if you were signed to them. Like, what were some of the headlines you seen that came out? The articles. Um, I definitely saw a lot of stuff like Rasby signs Las Vegas rapper Veronica Cooper. Mm-hmm. But anyone who read the articles, it would literally tell you like I wasn't signing like a deal with him. I already have a distribution deal and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was signing for consultant management help. Mm. Um, what did you gain from that? Let me ask that question. Um. What did I gain from that? <laughs> uh, I gained, <laughs> I learned to be a little bit more skeptical of people mm. and their intentions. Mm-hmm. And what- oh, and also my number one rule, you should never be managed by another artist. Never. And that's just how I feel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I manage a few people, which... Again, it started out as consulting, and then you begin to help manage their career. I usually say, like, I'm an assistant manager because you manage your own career. So, like, I consult, I help. But the, I, I, I learned from that to make a difference because the doors that open for me as an artist, I can then turn around and put my manager hat on and bring them through as well. And because of the connections that I've created, I'm able to literally bring them through with no problem. So... I understand that. And I always tell them, bro, my job is to elevate you to a place where somebody can take over because I'm not going to be here forever in this spot. Does that make sense? So, like, yeah, because I mean, like, as an artist yourself, if you were managing other artists and an opportunity came where it was going to take you away from being an actual manager to these people, mm -hmm. they're all going to feel some type of way about it, you Mm -hmm. know? So, I feel like as an artist, we should still put ourselves first, which is not a problem, but definitely definitely not being fully in control of somebody else's like career yes. as an artist is not smart for us or them. Right. It just cannot hurt people in the end. That's right. That's right. Okay. So we got that out of the way, no longer with Raz B and his team. You're looking for a new team. What is the elevation like for Veronica Cooper? When you look for, now. Huh? <laughs> Blow up is real. It is. It is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different vibe down here. You know, it, it don't have that West Coast feel. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I'm still a West Coast girl, but it's just like, so it's, it's a lot going on down here. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you, when you, how many teams have you had since you started? One. One team. Well, one. Okay. And you're no longer with that team? Mm hmm. And you're looking to elevate to another level of teammates. Mm-hmm. What is that like? The the let go and then the latch on, and it's a middle ground to that too. You mean like like how's it like emotionally type of thing? Because yeah. it's honestly not that hard to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm so dedicated to this craft that just because I had a mess up on this end doesn't mean that that ruined everything else I have going on. There's still. 50 other million things I got going on. So all I can do is chalk up that L and be like, okay, I learned my lesson Lesson. and now I know I need to move forward. Yeah, man. Cause it's like we independent and I think it's okay for us to grow together. Do people like want more from you or want more out of you or expect more from you? Like how does, how does it become a loss? Uh, Definitely a lot more expectations. I don't know why everybody thinks it's okay to ask me for money. I think that's so Mm. weird. (laughs) Wow. I just, I just find it so weird. Like everyone hits me up randomly with like these crazy sad stories and it ends with, here's a link to my GoFundMe. Oh, can you, can I borrow 15 bucks till Friday, which you never get paid back. Yeah, It's always some type of money thing. And it really, honestly, at first I didn't really mind it, but now I'm just like, okay, like you guys are really not, a lot of people who are just not really here for like me they're here for their own agenda yes and then what is the middle ground like when you don't have a team right now do you take it back to day one when it was just you and mom or how does that work i mean it's just back to just me and my mom doing you know a few things here and there but it's just me basically going back to square one um and actually i don't even want to say square one because i have so much knowledge now yes and you know so much more network so much more has been done so i can't even say level one no we're just we just we just messing with a new boss now. Yes, absolutely. And um, the couple years back, you had some awards, right? Didn't I see you on stage getting an award somewhere uh, outside the city? Yeah, I've gotten a couple.
couple of awards in different in different cities. Talk to me about those. Which, which awards have you received? Um, I received Music Video of the Year for the Spiral Awards in Philly. Yes. Um, yes. I got Hip Hop Female Artist of the Year and Album of the Year um, at the thing. I think I think it's the It's Gorgeous Music uh, thing that was in L.A. Okay. Both. Um. Dang, it was another award somewhere. I just don't remember where was I. I think I was in Virginia. That was a couple years ago. I, I was remember. tripping off the one in Philly. How did that work out? That was actually really dope. Um, the music video for You Don't Know Me, which was the last song that SM did that I decided to include on my mixtape anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, we shot a music video in Vegas. You know, it's like really like an uh, insane asylum, a bunch of girls looking cute, you know, and they're like little scrubs. I don't know who submitted it. I just got an email one day from them and they were like, you were nominated. Um, You know, we would like to um, invite you to come out to Philly Mm -hmm. for this award show. Mm -hmm. And so me and my mom, we flew out and then I ended up winning. Somebody else submitted it for you. Somebody else submitted it for me. I didn't even know there was like, I mean, I wasn't even thinking like outside of my city at the time. I was still so focused on Vegas. So to go out to Philly, that was like a really dope experience. I beg to differ because you are always digitally savvy. So you may be stationed in Vegas, but your ass be on the computer for sure. <laughs> Correct? No, it's facts. It's facts. Yeah, you be spreading them wings out. You feel me? Getting that web. All I do is read. Stretch. <laughs> for sure. And you told me, like, it takes a lot of work. Like, there's nothing that I can exactly tell you, but here are some little gems I can shoot over. But I've, you said I do a lot of reading and research. Right. And the Google ads is something that you just don't throw money at. You know what I mean? Like you got to know what you, yeah, you got to know what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was that for you trial and error or you went instantly to reading about it before you spend money. Um, so at first I did try to do a lot of reading. I tried to do some YouTube videos that didn't work. Um, but I ended up finding out like Google has, um, these courses for different, um, different services they provide. Yeah. So I actually ended up signing up for one of the courses yeah. and um, actually got to learn more in depth on how to use Google ads. Yeah. And that was like a dope experience as well. I've got a little certificate, you know, and whatnot. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> See, mode. that's dope. Extra credit in this independent <laughs> game. You know what I mean? And anybody can sign up for it. It's free. Correct. It's so, free. You know, Hey, there's some gems right there. Yes. What about the Facebook courses or the Facebook information to promote? Because they have that, too. You didn't they do, that? but I actually haven't done any of the Facebook ones. Okay. All right. Um, when it comes to deals, has anything came across your table that you turned down? Yes. Was it good, and you were just like, I'm staying indie, or was it bad, and you were like, that's why I'm staying indie? <laughs> um, so the deal that I received, it was actually a, it was a decent deal. I mean, it wasn't like like, oh, my God, life-changing type mm-hmm. of deal. But it required too many changes personally, mm. and I just chose not to go down that route. They wanted you to change your, like, content? Look, everything, who I am as a person, how I got here, like. Jeez. Are those locks? You got yes, locks now? I just locked my hair. Hey, welcome to the lock world, girl. I see you. Thank you. That don't stop you from wearing them purple wigs and pink wigs. Nope. <laughs> All right. We about to play a video. I think, I don't know how we just lost her. So while we do that, we about to play About Last Night, You Were Great by Veronica Cooper. Let's go. To be honest, I'm a chill type of guy. You know, I like to spoil my You know, I can't take you on the picnic. Have a seat and let me feed you, babe I'll be your dinner, your dessert, and you can lick the plate The way my voice went out the speakers, babe 
babe Now that I got all your attention Let me show you all my features uh, Are you ready right now? Test it number two Number two, how would you romance your lady out? Yeah, I'ma see. Let me check you out. <laughs> Are you ready right now? Would you would you take me down? Could you could you turn me out? Let me see. Let me check you out. Look me in the eyes and tell me no. Watch me make my lip and ready to go. I I could show you things you really like. Promise to hold you all through the night. No need for fighting, no makeup time. Baby, can I show you something right? Are you ready to believe in me? Are you ready to believe in things that you ain't never seen? Are you ready right now? Will you? Would you? Contestant number three. If we got into a really big argument, what would be our makeup date? Let me check you out, check you out. Are you ready right now? Would you would you take me down? Could you could you turn me out? Let me see, let me check you out. Laid back, phones off. No time for distraction. No games, we've grown. We can do this in sessions. If he had me one, he gon' want me twice. I spend the night. <laughs> Are you ready right now? Will you? Would you take me down? Could you? Could you turn me out? I'ma see. Let me check you out. Let me check you out. Are you ready right now? Would you? Would you take me down? Could you? Could you turn me out? Let me see. Let me check you out. Check you out. <laughs> Cody, you're so funny. We back. That's a fact. We back. Hot seat with Icy Jones right here on Room Service Radio. You know how it go, man. Live every Thursday and Friday, 12 to 2. You know what it do, man. And don't forget to check me out on Tuesdays, kicking it with Jones and Skinny. Man, y'all only got like mm, six weeks left uh, to join kicking it with Jones and Skinny. So if you want to kick it with us, man, make sure you DM us a comment. You know what I mean? And let us know you want to come kick it with Jones and Skinny right here on Room Service Radio. And we just played About Last Night, You Were Great by Veronica Cooper. I see you, V. Bring her on back, man. Bring her on back. Yeah, I see you, V. So, yeah, we touched on a lot of things, man. You in a hot seat with Icy Jones. How you feeling? Feeling hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, your videos are, are cinematic. Who is your visualizer? Me. You. I write all the treatments to my videos except for the very first one. Okay. And um, who's the cinematographer behind those visualizers? Um, I've had a few people. Um... <laughs> Give them a shout out. Give them a shout out. <laughs> oh, Lord. No, you didn't um... forget who these people names are. I said, I forgot everybody's names that quick. See, now you got me on the spot. I don't remember nobody's names. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go back. We'll go back. We'll go back. <laughs> I forgot everybody's name like that. <laughs> Brain fart. It's all good. It's all good. That's horrible. So, Vegas. Talk to me about Vegas. Like, what does Vegas mean to Veronica Cooper? My life. I don't ex- that's a, a hard question to answer for me. I don't know. Vegas is everything to me. Like every time something's going wrong in life, I can always come back home and I know that I'll be, you know, welcome with open arms. Mm. So Vegas is my safety blanket. Mm. That's good word right there. The first video we played, Poof is in the pudding, you were on like the west side of Vegas. Mm-hmm. Where where do you reside? Like, where, where do you go when you come to Vegas? Um, so like I I'm from H Street. Ooh. You know, so <laughs> nice. That's the West West. <laughs> so like my grandparents still live yeah. down there. So 
So I do kick it down there a lot with them. Okay. Um, I got family on the east side. Um, okay. I went to El Dorado, so I got to go back to the east side. Okay. And then my bougie, you know, family went to Henderson. So okay. I got to go to Henderson, too. Okay. I'm from the west side as well. My grandfather um, on 8th Street, right next to True Love. He stayed in that corner apartment in J&J. And okay. And so um, apartment D, so that's always, like, a place for me. Um, Valley View Estates, you know, uh, Lake Mead, Inglestead, D Street. That's love. Um, my grandparents, Regal Estates, you know, Revere, Cary. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. that's my heart right there where I was born and raised. And then we moved upwards, Smoke Ranch Rainbow and the Smoke Ranch Houses. And so, like, that's just me. So I asked that question to the people because I feel like we're still not completely exposed. Do you feel like Vegas is still completely, you know, is not completely exposed to the, the globe or, or the industry yet? No, not not even. Not even. People still think the Vegas is just the strip. Still, in 2021. Yeah, they still think that. When I take people from Vegas, they're like, oh, man, oh, my God, yeah, I went down to the strip one time. No, I, I don't live on the strip. Yeah. So people still think you live in hotels when you come here? They still do that. You know, I'm like, how, how do y'all still think that? That's crazy. So what do you think we have to do to express to the world or the, the music industry in general that we're a real city like like anywhere else in the world we got hoods we got gangs we got doctors lawyers we got college universities you know what i mean like what do we have to do uh, i feel like i start with like the media the media is always so focused on the strip like mm-hmm. every tv show they'll film all the big scenes in the you know in the strip but don't come actually out to the city or even work with the people in the city that live there yeah they bring people there so it's, i don't know it's kind of a weird little atmosphere honestly it's like using uh i don't know or just a background to them it's like using a white man to play aladdin <laughs> <laughs> Um, give you that one. Yeah, I don't think that's cool, right? So I feel mm-hmm. the same way. Um, but we we're 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 the historians now. We're the ones who are building Vegas and we are the ones who are creating that culture that the media will expose. Like, you know, Vegas is was built in nineteen oh five, so to speak, and then, you know, the strip and then, you know, they begin to build. But V, you, me, the rest of us are the ones who are building the legacy that starts now you know what i mean like it catches on late vegas catches on late anyway but they gotta understand that we actually are creators of things so are we late are we late or are we just on our own time that's what i was about that's what i was getting to we're actually creators of our own things we're on our own time and you know people got to catch on to us because we've been here and so that's what they say though is what i'm trying to say like we're late no we're actually on our own time and you got to come see what we're doing and you got to drive down and out, you know, get somebody who, who know the city though. Don't just go on your own because you might, you know, don't go past Boulder highway. Hold on. Yeah. And Bring don't, your own back down. don't go too far, you know, North on Las Vegas Boulevard, you know? <laughs> oh, you hit Cheyenne. Yeah. Oh, you, you good. Just stay right there. Come on back down. <laughs> <man. laughs> Look, you hit Bonanza too far down Las Vegas Boulevard. <laughs> So what is next? What's your next thing that you're going to accomplish? What's, let me say this. What's 22 looking like? You know what I mean? What's 2022 looking like for V-Coop? Man, that's looking real, real, real yummy. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in the process of working on some new music. I'm actually shooting a music video tomorrow. So that's going to be lit. Juju Vibes from Vegas. Uh, All right. He's going to be here. He'll be here today, actually. Okay. Um. So... I started a nail care company, so okay. I'm hoping that next year, between the nail care company and the new music, everything just keeps going on the up and up. Definitely. Do you survive? Like, do you? No, 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 no. Do you live off your music? Yes. That is crazy, right? Because people, they don't understand. Are you ever going to create courses or teach the game, like, through digital court web courses? Um, you know, I've been asked that a few times over the last couple of years. Um, I think I'd be down for doing it if someone else helped me with it, like setting it up, because I'm not, a, I don't think I'm a good teacher. I don't think I'm able to sit down and be like, oh, here's 
A through Z, but I am, I always get free game out. People have messaged me. I'm always, you know, quick to be like, oh, here's what I know. Yeah. Here's where you can get more research. You know, yeah. I'm never shy about anything. I'm pretty transparent about all of it. Right. But this didn't come to you by way of free. True. And it's okay to give out tidbits of gems, but when you begin to promote it, it's going to come with a fee. You know what I mean? Like, sure, I've inboxed Veronica Cooper about the game, and you've given me those gems and those keys, right? But it's going to take more than a DM. It's going to take a face-to-face like this, and it's going to take an hour or two for about six weeks for me to get the game, and then I need a budget to do what you did, to do what you do and follow in your footsteps, correct? Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't mind being a part of that staff and that team because I know a little bit myself. You feel me? And I've really been looking for somebody. You know West West? Yes. West West. He's blowing up like crazy right now. Mr. Everything. Yes. You feel me? Yeah. And he know about the business as well. So I think we need to grasp each other and really put out these web series. You know what I mean? And do these face-to-face for a nice amount of money that we can actually have um, for teaching. Like, I really believe in you, V. For real. Well, like hit you, me up. Hit me up and let me know what the details are. You've been doing your thing for a minute, and you survive. You live off this music, and it's dope. Tell me about the billboards. How does it feel to be on the iTunes charts and be on the billboards and getting those plaques in the mail? Talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, my God. I almost cried. I was like, look at this billboard plaque. It is so dope. And it took forever for me to get them because I actually, again, I didn't know how to get them. Mm -hmm. So when someone pointed me in the right direction, I made a couple calls. I was like, I can get this. I qualify for this. Mm -hmm. I got to get this. And to actually physically have it is just mind blowing. Um, Unfortunately, during my move from L.A., I lost all my trophies. Mm -hmm. So I actually have nothing, you know, to show for the last like four or five years of my career. So getting these plaques meant everything to me because it was just like okay i can see my accomplishment right here like yes. here is my oculate in my face no one can take this from me so. no and i don't think okay so the trophies and things like does that equate to those charts like from losing them to having those because i know no, it hurt. they don't they because don't. okay my very first trophy even though it was for you know a smaller one time off you know little award show in vegas that still meant everything because that meant that there were people out there that supported me from day one. Yeah. So to, to not have that trophy really, honestly, like it really broke my heart a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I had to ask that me. question. Like you lost it during a move. Like what was that like when you were, were you tearing up the house? Were you I looking was through crying. Like okay. I was, I was literally in tears. I would be too. I really would be too, because we, we are not doing this for nothing. You know what I mean? And to have those awards, those accolades, those plaques, like you said, even the one-off shows and all of that, it shows that people support and that they voted for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like, Someone took damn. the time out to put the award show on, rather it yes. was a one-time, two-time, forever. It doesn't matter. Someone took the time out to do that, and people took the time out to vote. That's and people okay. came out to come out to the events. Like, it's a whole thing. Yes. So, yeah, it matters. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the, what's the name of the next project you got coming? Uh, there's no name. But you can check out the song Ignorant okay. featuring Juju Vibes. Okay. Music video will be shot tomorrow. Bet good. Bet good. And that's the next thing that's coming out, right? Will we get that at the top of the year? We're going to get that this year. Uh, the song is already out. It's available on all streaming services. And yes. music video will probably be in like a couple weeks. So we will get the video this year. Yes. You will oh, get the video this shooky, year. Shooky. I heard Ignorant for sure. For sure. <laughs> I'm rocking with it. That's um, my ATL inspired song. Okay. Who are your inspirations right now today? Inspirations today? Yes. Ooh, see that? That's a good question. Okay. So, like, my inspirations today, like, right now, I really, really, really am obsessed with Meek Mills, and I don't know why, <laughs> but I am. <laughs> He's dope. He's dope. <laughs> I'm so obsessed, and I don't know what it is, but I'm just like, oh, okay, like, he was, he's fitting. Um, obviously, you know, we got i put a little Drake in there because Drake is definitely inspiring. The fact that he can go to different genres and everybody still loves him just keeps my, like, 
hopes up that people will understand that I just cannot just do one genre of music okay. forever. Yes. Um, and then still pink. Pink is my favorite mm. like um, entertainer in the whole world. She's wow. one of my biggest like inspirations. So she's always gonna be on top of that list. Any female rappers that you are into in this day and age? Yeah, Eve and Missy Elliott. And if you're talking about the new ones, yeah, um, Rico Nasty fire to me okay. like she's like my aggression rap okay. i love listening to her bet. and just like moshing out in the bedroom <laughs> bet bet um and then there's a, a baby mother she's actually like an hour outside of atlanta and hmm. i love her music her music is real like baby she's be talking about real stuff mother mm-hmm. wow never heard of her that's dope yeah yeah i've been promoting her for about about two years now i i like her she dope dream feature Dream feature, mm. probably right right now, probably like between Missy Elliott mm. and, it, but I also really really like Money Bag Yo, okay, and Black Youngster. So I'm like, mm. I don't know, somewhere on there. Right, right. Um, man, and speaking of those guys, man, that's that that's that Memphis man. I want to do, I do want to send my love and condolences to Young Dolph and his family. For that tragic incident that happened November 17th. Forever Eston Stone, man. Forever in our hearts, man. Hip hop, uh, independence, paper route empire, man. Paper route Frank, man. Rest in heaven to you, bro, and your family, man. And you set your kids up straight and they'll be rich forever. And I know that they would rather have their father than the riches, but that's the life and the path that you knew that we were going down. And uh, you set them up it's just in case anything ever happened. So it's a good heart, man. Good mindset. And my condolences to you and the family and whoever watches this out in Memphis and anybody touched by him, my condolences to y'all. Um, now, what is the biggest occupancy that you had, biggest crowd that you've had that you can remember? Um, the biggest crowd that I can remember will probably be my first L.A. sold out show um, at the airplane. And mm -hmm. that was in 2018. Mm -hmm. In, in the 2018 that was probably my biggest crowd i was it was packed it was hot in there it was it was hot so. what, was, what was that number what was that number um i think it was like 650 was the max out for that okay that's dope all for you all for me i was me <laughs> and one opener that's crazy how long was your set um i think it was 30 35 minutes long that's nice yeah, I, brought, I actually have brought, I have brought two artists from Vegas out to that particular show. Okay. Um, and then after that, I performed at um, the, at the oh, I just performed at the Atlanta Hip Hop Festival. Yes. Um, Hip Hop Day Festival. That would probably be uh, that was wow, that was actually the largest festival crowd I ever done on right. day one. That was I wouldn't even tell you how many people were there. That was mind blowing. Correct. Do you still get nervous before you hit stages? Always. Me Always. Too. Me too. You know, but, but I'm nervous about different things. I'm nervous about the shoes that I'm wearing. Am I going to trip on yes. this stage? Yes. Because <laughs> I'm 6'1", and as everybody yes. knows, like I wear platform heels yes. all the time, so I'm always like 6'6 six, six at that point. Naturally, 6'1". So, Were yeah. you ever into sports? I tried to be. Did anybody want to give me no shot? Oh. It's all good. They didn't want me to be great. They didn't want me to have a basketball career. They was like, <laughs> nah. nah. This is Hot Seat with Icy Jones. We got Veronica Cooper in the hot seat, man. I enjoyed you, like thoroughly enjoyed you today. Um, did you enjoy yourself today? I did. Thank you for having me, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. So we're going to get out of here. I got the last song that I'm going to play by you. Let me go and get this good old name of it. Because I chose Like Damn. Ooh. Oh, you're going to end the show on some heartbreak shit. All right. It's Hot Seat. Go ahead and introduce it for me. Matter of fact, hold on. Before you do that, let's look at the camera. I need you to say, this is Veronica Cooper. I was in a hot seat with Icy Jones on Room Service Radio. Let's go. What's up? This is Veronica Cooper, and I was in the hot seat with Icy Jones on room. loop wait i'm sorry wait room service radio <laughs> on room service radio bloopers <laughs> all right let's get it straight go 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 <laughs> oh, what's up? this is your girl 
Veronica Cooper, and I'm in the hot seat with Icy Jones on Room Service Radio. Hey. All right, introduce Like Damn for us. This, oh, hi, I'm Veronica Cooper, and this is my song, Like Damn, produced by Cody Got Beats. All right, let's go. I see y'all on the flip side, but watch this video. Let's get it. Give you for your 